Today on The Miraculous Life, you are gonna hear how to live the life that Jesus Christ bled for you to live. It's about the miraculous lifestyle. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to The Miraculous Life. I'm your host, Steve Hannett, and today we're gonna to be speaking about a very powerful topic about living a lifestyle that Jesus Christ died for us to live. Now, this is a part two to a two-part series with a special guest, Michael Lombardo, who is the founder of Life Poured Out International. And during the first episode with him, we really spoke about the realities that God desires for us to have a miraculous encounter. But in this show today, we're gonna to dive deeper and we're gonna speak about the reality that God desires for us to have a miraculous lifestyle, one that effortlessly produces the signs, wonders, and miracles and the peace and the love and the joy that Jesus Christ really died to give us. So again, I wanna welcome my good friend, Michael Lombardo. God bless you. So happy to be here. So we had fun in our first, uh, in our first show together and uh, just absolutely amazing how Jesus Christ took you from the depths of intense drug use mm -hmm. um, that literally did brain damage to yeah. you, healed your brain, yeah. caused you and enabled you to write books, travel the world, minister the gospel. Your encounter wasn't just for a moment, but created an entire movement of glory in your life. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna be very, very, very specific because I'm gonna tell you, God doesn't want to create a moment in people's lives. He wants to create a movement of glory. Yeah. And too many people are having moments. They're talking about last year's manna. They're talking about testimonies from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And they're living in the wilderness and they're living in dry places. Today, we're gonna to break that. Today, we're gonna to listen to some keys about how we can live in the living water of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So I know that you have written this very wonderful book called Immersed in His Glory. I want to dive into some of these things and help us to uh, gain some of the wisdom from it and talk to us about maybe some of the keys that you've experienced in your own life to say, if you want to just have a lifestyle of glory, how do you do it? Wow. Well, I, I, you know, the book, it's, I, go, I go into a lot in the book because yeah. I feel like it's, um, you know, everyone's got their own struggles, their own barriers. But for me, when I encountered him, all I wanted was more. I didn't mm. want to just have, uh, I don't want to visit that place of his presence. Mm. I wanted to dwell there. Just like I was a drug junkie yeah. and I wanted to be high every moment. I wanted to be in his presence, yeah. hearing him, feeling him. I wanted, I wanted that, that communion, that connection 24-7. So I really... I, I began a journey with the Lord where I was really mm. seeking that and I was spending a whole lot of time with him. I went up in Bible school and I was known as a prayer room guy because I was always in the prayer room. I always had my Bible open. I was just so hungry, <laughs> devouring the scriptures, yeah. wanting to know more, doing evangelism, going on missions trips. God began to spark a lot in me because once you encounter him, you got to tell people about him. Yes. You got it. It's just, yeah. it's just natural. Like you said, it's effortless. Yeah. You, you encounter the one that you love and you, and you can't hold that in. Yeah. And for me, I began to see certain people in scriptures um, that really resonated with me. And there's this, this woman that we don't talk about often, but her name's Mary of Bethany. Mm. And I, I saw her life in the scriptures. She's only three times in the Bible. And each time, she's at the feet yeah, of Jesus. Amen. The first time, everything, everything was good, everything was fine. And, and you know, Martha was struggling and striving, and she was trying to make everything perfect for Jesus. And she was there at his feet, listening to his words. Hallelujah. The second time, Lazarus died, her brother, and she's in a desperate situation, but she doesn't run from him. She runs to Jeez. him, and she falls at his feet. Amen. So now she's not just seated at his feet. She is falling Amen. at his feet, asking real questions. If you were here, Lord, my, my, my brother wouldn't have died. Yes. She got real with him. She wasn't afraid to ask the hard questions. And then Amen. when her miracle came through, when her brother was raised from the dead, now you, you see Mary of Bethany, she's now anointing yes, his feet hallelujah. with costly perfume. When you encounter his love, when you receive yeah. a miracle and receive a breakthrough, it, it doesn't matter 
what the Lord asks you to lay down. Sacrifice is no sacrifice at all when you're in love. That's right. so, so the miracle comes through, you fall more in love with him, you yeah. go to a deeper place of devotion, a deeper place of sacrifice, she poured it out, and, and, and the fragrance of her, mm. of her worship filled that mm. place. So there's this lifestyle of, of um, just spending time with him in his yeah. word, asking him, ask him hard questions, um, ask him to reveal to you the truth. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal truth to Amen. us. So prioritize his presence in your Amen. life. Prioritize the word because he'll begin to set you free and establish you in truth that will really um, um, impact you, equip Amen. you, empower you to live this lifestyle of it, God's it, It's a powerful truth that you're bringing and it's one that is not complicated, is it? It's one that's rather simple, that we need to spend time in his presence. You know, I, I, I'm thinking about the, the idea of fire in the Bible, that often the presence of God was symbolized in the Old Testament and New Testament with fire. But the fire always followed the sacrifice. The human being laid down the sacrifice. They would lay down the animal. They would lay down the sacrifice. And then the fire would come. And, and I, I really believe in uh, Romans chapter 12. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there briefly and, and actually read this text um, because this is something that I think uh, we, especially in the Western church, need to hear because we're busy. In fact, you and I were talking about that earlier today. We are busy with family and jobs and, and ministry even yeah. and not going to the presence. But this is what the Apostle Paul reveals. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, pleasing. Amen to God. It says, which is your reasonable service? To me, this is, this is, this is a, a illustrating what you're sharing. Absolutely. Mary presented herself, yeah. not to receive, Mm-mm. but to give, oh, yeah. to anoint. It's a powerful thing. We were talking about the fire. You know, for me, the fire symbolizes the passion mm. of Jesus. And I feel like there's something in my heart. I, 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 I feel like people are asking, but I'm not passionate about souls. I'm not passionate about the harvest. Well, get with the one who is passionate. His Amen. heart burns with passion Amen. for souls. That passion led him right to the cross. Yeah. And, uh, it led him right to the cross. It says in Revelation that his eyes are like flames of yeah. fire. It's his passionate love yeah. for us. So the more you spend time with the great God of the Great Commission, yeah. the more your heart will burn Come on. Come for on. the things that burn in his yeah. heart. Yeah, well, Paul the Apostle in Galatians 2.20, where he said, therefore, you know, I've, I've been crucified with Christ. Right? <laughs> it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And, and, and this is so powerful because people are often wondering how, 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 how. And they forget that their job is not to produce. Their job is to abide. Mm. That's, so That's our job. Yeah. The apostle Paul said, woe is me if I don't preach this gospel. <laughs> like the gospel had him. He didn't just have yeah. the gospel. The gospel had him. Yeah. He said, I was compelled by Love. Hallelujah. He wasn't compelled by the strict demands of the law. That's right. He wasn't compelled by um, harsh legalism. He was compelled by the love of Jesus that was burning in his heart. And this is something that um, I I love. Heidi Baker put put this language to it. And she's like, uh, I just love how she said this. All fruitfulness flows from intimacy. Yeah. So the more you're intimate with him, as you abide in the vine, as you abide in him, then this fruit is going to be springing forth in your life. And it's not the fruit of Michael. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's right. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Jesus even said in in John chapter 15, he said, I can do nothing without the Father. Now, I had somebody ask me one time, says, yeah, but Pastor Steve, you you can drive your car. You can do this. You can do this. You can do that. But Jesus was qualified to say that statement. Why? He said, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I hear my father do. So he could do nothing because he would do nothing without the father, but he could not do anything without the father. I believe when we cease from our works and his work becomes our work, we don't have to ask how anymore. It's automatically happening. Yeah. Automatically happening. Yeah. And that was my struggle. 
because when you're born again, and when you have a radical encounter with God, you're, you're born again. A Holy Spirit heart surgery takes place. He takes your heart <laughs> of sin, a yeah. hard heart, and he gives you a heart of flesh. Yeah. You now have um, a love for righteousness and, and a hatred for wickedness. You have the very heart of Jesus now on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit lives in there. So now I just wanted to please him with everything. Yeah. And I'd read books of generals and, and mighty men of God that were, that, that were used mightily in, in healings and miracles. And, yeah. and I, w- I, I just thought, man, if I fasted more, if I, if I, if I just pray like them, if yeah. I just do X, Y, Z, then God will use me. Yeah. I was always trying to persuade him yes. to anoint me more, twist his arm to give me a prophetic word. Mm. And I, was, I would just be striving and striving. Mm. And when I felt like I deserved his love the least, mm. Because when you condemn yourself and you beat yourself up, you want to be being very weak. Yeah. And I would fall into things I didn't want to fall into. And he began to, when I, when I felt like I deserved him the least, yeah. he would whisper things to my heart like, I love you yeah. and I'm never going to stop loving you. Amen. And you don't need to strive for my power. Amen. And he began to amplify Christ yes. in my life. What he did. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's, I still, I read my Bible, I speak in tongues, I pray, that, that, that's a disclaimer, okay? Yeah, yeah. You know, but my heart was rooted in a place of faith, yes. not in a place of trying to please God yeah. through works. Yeah, and you know, there's a huge difference between reading the Bible, praying, and worshiping as guilt offerings. Yeah. You know, they're never meant to be yeah. guilt offerings. Yeah. They were always meant to be love offerings. Yeah. And the amazing thing is when you fall in love with a woman, right, and we're both married, so we, yeah. we, we know, uh, and then we fall in love with our children, and we both have children. Mm-hmm. No one has to tell me I should spend time with my wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I should spend time with my little, my little treasures, my little children. No, I, I love it. And, and, and you know, when you come home after travel mm-hmm. and, and, and the kids are running down the steps, they're running through the room and they can't wait to get to you and all three of them tackle me at yeah. the door. Yeah. That's what pleases me as a dad. Yeah. I believe, I'm fully convinced that Father God is desiring that kind of raw, authentic, like, Lord, I just want to be with yeah. you. Yeah. That brings power. Yeah. I want to share one more thing. Um, the producer of The Miraculous Life doesn't know this, but she, uh, through her relationships, enabled me to go to a church in uh, Queens, New York. Mm-hmm. And um, I had to get something from my car and come in. I was supposed to minister to all these youth. I felt so inadequate. I began asking God, please, God, anoint me, God. And exactly what you said came through. Rest, son. I already did. (laughs) And I I rested. I am anointed. And that sounds arrogant in a way to some people. Mm -hmm. That may seem, Steve, who do you think you are? It's not who do I think I am or who do we think we are. We actually know that we're the beloved sons. Yeah of the living God, and nothing is of our own, but rather given to us from him. That day, the power of God moved so beautifully, everybody was touched, and the floor was filled with bodies laying down in the presence of God. Oh, yeah. And when I was catching this revelation, it was like he was teaching me about his fullness, that I have his fullness. We receive his fullness and grace upon grace. And I was, the Lord has set me free from a lot of legalism and really rooting me in the gospel, because the gospel is the power of God. And I went to the Philippines um, a few years ago, I went to the Philippines, and as I was there, um, my friend and I, we're just encouraging each other. We're like, God's with us, we're yeah. anointed, you know? And it's, you're saying, you know, how arrogant are we? It's more arrogant to think that I could somehow earn the anointing <laughs> right. than say, I'm anointed because of what Jesus Christ Amen. accomplished for me. We're giving him all the glory. That's right. We saw in the Philippines a woman with leprosy, completely <sighs> cleansed. We saw um, a woman who was paralyzed for 13 years walk for the first time. And oh, man. she was dependent on people to go to the bathroom because she couldn't get to the bathroom <sighs> herself. Hallelujah. But when you begin to abide in this revelation that, that he did it all, he Amen. provided it all, and now we just get to bring him his reward. Amen. And, and it's him working in me and through me. Amen. And now I'm not searching inward. Did I, did I, did I pray enough today? Did I, did, I, did, I, did I fast enough? Or maybe my, 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 my thought life yeah. you know, wasn't great yesterday, so yeah. maybe God won't use me. Now we say, no, it's not any merit of my own. It's the merit of the cross, Amen. and I'm just a willing vessel. Yeah. Flow through me, Holy Spirit. Amen. We see the miraculous yeah. in amazing ways. And, and you're seeing this not because of your effort at all, mm-hmm. but merely because you're allowing him to do what he wants to do. We need this lesson because I think maybe some people may be even looking at you because God is using you so 
uh, dramatically in, in, in writing books and in praying for people, spending time with the, the poor in the streets uh, of, of the inner city and, and, uh, and then preaching to nations and these fruits are being produced. But we need to shift our mentalities that it is Christ in us that is producing uh, the work. These miracles that have been happening, I, I want to talk about them for a little bit. Would you say that if, if we really repented of how we use our time <laughs> and we moved from self-focused living to God-focused living, do you think there'd be a shift in the entirety of Christendom? that miracles would begin happening for moms and dads praying for their children, for aunts and uncles, for, for mailmen and postmen praying for people, doctors and nurses praying for people. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you think it would have that much of an impact? Yeah. Because most people think, well, I'm not, I'm not a full-time minister. Michael, you're an evangelist. Pastor Steve, you know, you're in missions. You're doing all this work. Talk to us. What, what, what has God taught you in the word about that it's for everybody? Oh, it's absolutely for everybody. Um, you know, what I, before I was a full-time minister, we just I'd see God do so many miracles just at Walmart, just at my friend's house. Right. You just wind up sharing the gospel. The Holy Spirit lives in every single one of us. You know, the evangelist is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So right. I, my, my role as an evangelist is supposed to teach everyday saints, people who maybe aren't called to the fivefold, how to share the gospel. And it's mm. always in authentic love and it's always in power, mm. you know? So... We need to get past that barrier. All mm. of us have him living on the inside of us. We're mm. all fully equipped yeah. for life and godliness and to be a minister of reconciliation. You got to get this teaching. You got to get this truth because it, the, Satan has lied that yeah. there's clergy and laymen. Yeah. That there's, you know, the clergy actually comes from the word cleric. It means the educated. Yeah. So really they're speaking about this elite group of people that are educated and just these lay people. You've, you've been lied to. You are the temple of God's Holy Spirit. If you are a believer in Jesus, you can literally call on the same name that we're calling on and see the same exact miracles. We're hearing about some people in, in Christendom that, and yes, God wants us to hear about these examples and the generals in the faith and people yeah. walking the earth today. But I believe that this is the hour more than ever in all creation that the ministry of the entire body of Christ yeah. needs to be moving functioning, praying, worshiping, yeah. moving in healing, and, 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 and producing the signs that accompany the word of God. Yeah. But the question is, will you make the shift? Will you begin to no longer declare, oh, I'm a victim? Will you declare, no, I'm a victor yeah. in Jesus Christ? Yeah. And, and I want to ask, my, Michael, I want you to, to uh, just talk with us a little bit. How can we break this persistent lie that I'm no good? Yeah. Because that's moving on people all the time. I'm not good enough. I'm not educated enough. I don't have enough experience. Walk us through how could we break this and come into this life of fruitfulness? Yeah. I believe, you know, my book's called Immersed in His Glory. So I am, I believe strongly about, you know, developing an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But we need a, a firm grounding in the Word of God. Mm. The Word of God is living powerful and sharper than a double-edged sword. So our minds need to be renewed. Our hearts need to be healed. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit will come and he'll heal our hearts. He'll uproot lies that we've believed about ourselves. Like, I can't do that. That's just for the evangelist. Mm -hmm. Or, um, uh, but I'm just unworthy. And the, the, you know, the shame and the guilt that holds us back. Or the Holy Spirit will lead us into repentance. Like mm -hmm. we were talking about the selfishness, which is yeah. the spirit of this age. Because yeah. the spirit of Jesus is the spirit of selfless love. Amen. So if there's areas of selflessness, Holy Spirit will come. Amen. And he'll, he'll lead you to repentance through his kindness. Yeah. But we need a foundation in the word of God. Mm. We need to know that we are heirs of salvation. Amen. We need to know that the anointed one lives on the inside of us. That we've received his fullness and grace upon grace. Mm. He didn't give us his spirit with measure. And mm. it's the gospel 
That is the power of God. That we're all ministers of reconciliation. That we're all ambassadors of Christ. Like everything I'm saying right now, it's just the word of God. And we need to personalize it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as we see the truth mapped out in the scriptures, Mm -hmm. the lies that we've believed and cherished and Mm -hmm. nursed in our hearts will begin to be dismantled. Mm -hmm. And we'll be living from his truth. And the truth will set us free. Knowing Mm -hmm. the truth sets you free, according to John 8. Mm -hmm. So every believer, there's so many believers, we have a shallow understanding of the word of God. We need to see the word of God we need to personalize the word of God speak the word meditate on the word walk in the word amen Joshua 1 you know the Lord said speak the word meditate on the word do the word and then you'll be fruitful and then you'll be successful so as you abide in the spirit and you abide in his presence you're also abiding in the living word who is Jesus amen you know there's a um, a saying that a lot of people will know uh, you are what you eat yeah I thought about that one day and I said Lord That's biblical. I take in the body of Jesus. I drink the blood of Jesus. I receive the life of Jesus. I become transformed. We become children of God by receiving the word of God. I I, want to definitely confirm what you're saying. And I can't explain it to you, but I know that when I'm reading the Bible, meditating on the Bible, I know that there is a transfer. There is a supernatural transaction from the heavenlies through his word Yep. Into my heart that that I, I so many times I, I I feel anxious I feel afraid I I feel confused whatever's happening and I'll go to the word, and in just a little bit of receiving and meditating upon the the word I know I'm meditating on Jesus I'm communing with Jesus but somehow the word gets in you on you all over you and you begin functioning mm. according to the word of life. Mm. This is a powerful thing. Again, you can spend time with Him. You can set yourself apart for him. You can get into the word. If you notice, we're not giving anything. Mm -hmm. That may be some new special revelation. We're actually being used by God, I believe, to return people back to the simple truth of abiding with Jesus Christ. I'm so excited what's going to happen to you and what's going to happen to us as we continue to do it. I'll tell you what's going to happen to you. You're going to bear fruit that you've never bared before that you've never bore before. You, you, are, you are gonna produce things that you have never ever in your life dreamt that you can do. And it's gonna be an overflow. It's gonna be an overflow. Yeah. It's gonna be an overflow. You won't be grasping for anointing. It will be a natural overflow that you'll be operating in this supernatural realm. Mm. All right, are you ready to get prayed for? Are you ready to allow a prayer of faith to be released so that you may live in the miraculous lifestyle. You know, prayer changes things. And I'm going to ask you, Michael, yeah. pray the prayer. And, 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 you know, almost as an intercessor, man, yeah. in the gap between them and Christ, because he, he, he longs for us to, to live immersed in his glory. Amen. 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 This is something I feel really strong on my heart. We get really comfortable in our Christianity, and the Lord, it's a gift from God. It's divine dissatisfaction. Mm-hmm. You begin to sense there's, there's got to be more. I can't live the way I've been living, and God's doing that in your heart right now. There's a divine dissatisfaction. He's pulling you. He's drawing you into the deeper things, into a lifestyle that, you, that you're destined for. You were born for this. Amen. You were born to know him, and you were born to make him known. So I just pray that there's this unrelenting hunger that, it, that, that, that fills your heart to begin to, to dive into the word, to, to, to step out of that selfish life of just all about me and my life and I'm too busy and I'm too, you know, all the distractions and we begin to look at other people and want to be used and, and want to speak the word of God and pray for other people. So there's a three letter word, yes, Y-E-S, and it changes everything. It changes everything. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I just pray that the gift of hunger would fill your heart, that there would be a divine dissatisfaction that would draw you into the deeper life that you're meant to live. I pray hunger would fill your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who hunger are filled and satisfied. There's this beautiful cycle in the spirit of hunger and satisfaction and then more hunger and then satisfaction. 
And I just thank you, Lord, for just filling every single heart right now in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I just thank you for just tremendous grace. I sense tremendous grace is being released. Because when you humble your heart before him, or when you yield to him, when you say yes to him, when you say yes and you yield to him in humility, grace begins to pour out on your life. He gives grace to the humble, he opposes the proud. So he's literally pouring out grace into your life as you yield to him and say, Lord, do what only you can do. I can't do it, but you can. Whatever's impossible with man is possible with you. Hallelujah. So I just thank you, Father, for just pouring out wisdom and revelation and immersing them in your glory. In Amen. Jesus' name. I want to tell you, receive that prayer today and you said yes today, everything is going to shift. Everything is going to change. But I want to tell you that moments are good. Yeses are good. But God is desiring, as we've been talking about, an entire lifestyle of change. Yeah. There's something very practical that you can do. Number one, I want you to make sure you get a Bible and you begin reading that Bible every day. I also want to talk with you about learning more and going to Immersed in His Glory. Listen to the subtitle. It says, A Supernatural Guide to Experiencing and Abiding in God's Presence. This is what we need, and this is a very easy, practical step. And I want to make sure that we let you know that you can go to lifepouredoutinternational.org, correct? Lifepouredoutintl. Life poured out, I-N-T-L. Go to the website, find out more about Michael, and we thank you and love you in Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless. My name is Steve Hannett, and I'm the founder of Every House, the ministry that produces the miraculous life. I'd like today to talk with you about prayerfully becoming a financial partner with our ministry to get the word of God out to the nations. You know, we've got an amazing team that's dedicated to seeing lives change. Many people don't know that when they're becoming a financial partner, that they're literally joining the work with us and literally becoming part of the family to produce fruit in the nations. Now, we understand that your tithes belong to your local church, and we encourage you to be faithful to your local congregation. So we also understand that there are offerings that you can invest in ministries like Every House to help support the work that we're doing. Simply go to everyhousenow.org, click the Give button, and you'll be presented with a series of options of how to partner with us. God bless you, and we thank you in advance for your love. We pray you've been blessed by The Miraculous Life and know the Lord Jesus desires His best in your life. The Miraculous Life is a production of Every House, a missions ministry focused on releasing the power of God, establishing strong churches, and developing sound leaders who advance the kingdom of God. Your love gift to Every House is tax deductible in accordance with the law. We believe your tithes belong to your local church and your donations to our ministry are received as offerings for the advancement of the Great Commission.